Here on Fox 24 News Now, we're always eager to explore our beautiful city's history. And today, we bring you to the Hayward Washington House on Church Street, also known as the Revolutionary War House. A big thank you to curator Chad Stewart. Thank you so much for hosting us here at the Hayward Washington House. Um, I think there's also a, a happy birthday that's in order for this house. Yep, this house is 250 years old this year, um, finished in 1772. It's a tremendous house, a beautiful specimen of architecture. Um, before we get into some of those details mm -hmm. though, explain to us why it's called the Hayward Washington House. Uh, this house was built by Daniel Hayward between 1771 and 1772. Um, and lived in by his son, Thomas Hayward Jr., who was uh, one of South Carolina's four signers of the Declaration of Independence. Later in the early 1790s, um, when George Washington was visiting Charleston um, as part of his southern tour, he um, rented this house for one week in May of 1791. So we are standing in the very house where George Washington slept. Yes, yes. The, that, that really, it, you have to let it sink in for a moment. And, and when you think about the, the age of the house, it's actually older than the country itself. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's a significant property lived in by you know, one of the founding fathers, visited by one of the first pres presidents. Um, it's also the only colonial era house in Charleston that's open to the public regularly. So the Charleston Museum acquired the property in 1929, restored it then, and opened about 1930 to guests. What has allowed it to withstand the test of time? Because it stands very proudly along Church Street. It looks beautiful. You walk through the halls and into the different rooms. It's in remarkable condition. Um, that is largely the result of uh, the museum and other preservation partners who um, banded together in the late 1920s to buy the house from its last private owners and restore it to its 1770s appearance. That was a time in preservation when a lot of historic houses were being taken apart and their parts shipped to museums and other collectors along the East Coast. And um, Charleston uh, really banded together and saved this house so that this room in particular, the drawing room, wouldn't have been taken out and shipped to a museum. Going around the room, can you pick apart a few of the uh, more indicative hallmarks of the craftsmanship that once existed here in Charleston? Yeah, Charleston uh, architecture, it, extremely high quality for the 18th century, especially the drawing room here. It's the most architecturally sophisticated room in the house, noted for the blind fretwork um, around the mantelpiece and the overmantel, um, and even the cornice around the room. Um, a lot of these pieces are actually mahogany, um, very popular wood in colonial Charleston, um, and easy to carve, so it, it does pop up in Charleston interiors a good bit. And how about the furniture? Because very delicate, beautifully executed, and these pieces have also withstood the test of time. Yes, in this house, the Charleston Museum has um, one of the better collections of Charleston made furniture in existence. This spin in particular, I've never seen one before. Yes. I never knew that these existed. So what would you describe this as? It's sort of a hybrid between a piano and a harpsichord. Low volume, similar to a harpsichord. Oh, sound okay. Um, which is likely why it's so richly decorated, because you have to stand rather close to it to hear it. So walking through this home when people come to visit the Hayward Washington house, what are you hoping that they take away when they step back out onto the street and go back to their normal lives? Well, uh, the, the Hayward Washington house and other museum houses are a good window into the past. So you get to see how our lives compare to people who lived before us. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of similarities. The, the domestic structures are very similar, relatable, but the way these houses worked um, is very different. Plus, you know, Charleston was a slave society, so this house and other townhouses like it functioned with slave labor. We know 17 enslaved people were living on this property um, by the end of the 18th century, so. As we saw in the kitchen building, yes. so there's a level above that area and that's where they slept, that's yes. where they lived. Yeah, very common urban slavery was to live above the kitchen dependency. Goodness. Well, Chad, I want to thank you so much for just allowing us to peer inside of history and for yes. giving us such wonderful information. Yeah, thank this you has for been coming. Fun. We're back after this. <laughs>